Thank you very much, Eloise. Great agenda for this webinar, I must say. I'm really looking forward to seeing Yell and Nicola's uh, presentations as well. So what I wanted to do today is really just set the scene for the webinar. I'm going to have a kind of a, a look back at the market over the past two years and really look at some of the customer demographics and the Kensington customers that we think need solutions. Um, I will then be looking at some of the challenges in the market and I won't lie, it's a little bit doom and gloom. However, there is then some light at the end of the tunnel and I'll take a little bit of that gleam, but Yale and Nicola will really, along with Eloise, be talking about that too. So, who are specialist customers? <clears throat> um, what we're seeing is in the market is a lot of growth from customer groups. So that's kind of the first things and we're seeing new groups emerge as well. So that's quite interesting. These customers are typically customers you could say that are left on the shelf from the high street. Um, and that's really where Kensington and other specialists specialist lenders come into their own. So I just wanted to take a quick look about who these customers could be and actually the makeup of the Kensington book as well. So if you look at these stats kind of on the screen at the moment, so um, we're known very much as a residential lender. Um, we do buy to let as well. If you kind of look at the specialist market and who's um, where we put ourselves against our peers, we take around a 30% um, share, market share of residential business and around a 13, 14% of buy to let business. So of that residential business, 36% of our customers are self-employed, which is a huge part of what we do here at Kensington. I know we'll talk and um, we'll touch on that later and we've spoken about that in webinars before. Also 34% of the book are landlords, which I know Yale will be touching on how we can help them, especially with EPC. Green seekers being a very new customer segment. Um, we've been offering kind of our eco range for over two years now, and that makes up 4% of our book already, which is um, quite big in such a short period of time. And then we have our first time buyers. So 32% of our customers are also first time buyers, which um, we're going to talk a lot about kind of some of the challenges in the market and first time buyers are affected quite a lot within that. So uh, we'll come up with solutions for you as well. I think the last thing to say kind of about this customer group and, and, and how it relates to us in this webinar and the people listening is that these customers need more solutions. So as a lender, that's what we're trying and aiming to do. But from a broker perspective, these customers really, really need advice. So um, of all the customer groups, you know, you can't use tech and aggregators to find solutions for these customers. They really are um, needing their broker to give them some really sound advice. So if we go on to the next slide and we're looking on to the mortgage market. So what I wanted to look at here was product availability. So after the over the last two years, um, you'll obviously see on this graph, it's showing specialist products that are available, residential and buy to let products. So you obviously see a very big dip there. And that was the pandemic and COVID. If you look at the amount of specialist products that were on the market at that time, um, there was two and a half thousand approximately across specialist lenders. That dropped down to 380. Um, there's various reasons for that. Obviously, some of our um, peers weren't able to continue lending because of funding issues. Um, we were very lucky that we'd um, we'd kind of covered that just before COVID hit. We were actually one of only three lenders, uh, specialist lenders, that continued to lend. That with the ongoing challenges of valuations, obviously not being able to leave your own home, that kind of all attributed to the, the lack of products in the market. So if we look post COVID, um, we've seen a huge growth in those numbers. So over 27 percent. So there's now 3,300 products available um, coming from the, you know, the, the 380 and the 2,500 before that. So lots and lots of innovation coming from lenders and uh, products being put back on the market. If you look at residential and buy to let, they've gone up as well with 6 percent resi and 20 percent um, of buy to let, which is probably a surprising number as well, considering the challenges that landlords are facing um, at the moment. So if we move on to the next slide, we'll start looking at some of the challenges. So first up is deposit. If we look at the first, the average age of a first time buyer, that age is actually 34 years old, which is relatively high. Um, I'm going to say that because that's quite close to, to my age range. If you look back to the 60s, 
average age of a first time buyer was 23 year old, 23 years old. So um, there's a big difference there. A lot of the customers that we class as first time buyers when they're taking a mortgage are in a couple and uh, a large percentage of those couples have dependent children as well. So, you know, that's a lot of outgoing childcare, etc. Um, for those first time buyers to have. If you then look at the deposits, the deposit on average in the UK just shy of £60,000, which is which is very high. If you don't have access to the bank of mum and dad, how are you going to save um, that kind of deposit? Um, and this is where we come to the graph on, on the right hand side, so earnings versus rent. If in the in the extreme circumstance of London, half of your earnings are going towards rent, how are you going to save that £60,000 deposit? And even looking kind of at, at the bottom end of the scale in the northeast, you're still at 25 percent on average of your your money going towards uh, uh, rent. So really hard and really to keep hard to keep on top of that. If you then add in either if you're one of those couples with dependent children, utility bills, inflation, everything else, it's um, very, very challenging uh, to get there. So if we look at the next slide and the challenge being affordability. So, OK, you've managed to get this deposit, be it via bank of mum and dad, or you've managed to save despite so much outgoings every month. How do you actually uh, pay it back and how does the affordability work? So the graph on the right is showing uh, price earning ratios for London, South East, Yorkshire and Northern Ireland. And uh, again, quite quite high figures there with the extreme being London, the average um, house price versus what you're earning needs to be 12 times, which is huge, even six times in, in the southeast at the other extreme. Um, the pandemic has obviously had an effect on that as well. So it's made it a bit more difficult. And actually, if you then look at house prices and the house prices continuing to rise since COVID, we've seen a 21 percent increase. So that, that that's absolutely huge on its own. My um, my husband's actually an, an agent and he's kind of been in the industry for, for 20 years now. And he talks a lot about the top and bottom parts of the market moving. So either your first time buyers or your, your your older, your older borrowers. And he said it's kind of been over the last two years. You've not seen that. It's the whole market moving all at once. And uh, definitely when we look at house prices and how they've risen just since the pandemic, you know, the predictions were that this would have stopped by now and we'd be leveling out. But we're still seeing those house prices and um, people offering over asking price still going on. So we will see when that w continues to change. Um, if you look at house prices across again, let's go back to the to the 90s. Um, they've risen by 160 percent. And then when you look at people's salaries and, and, and their affordability and income and how that's grown, that's only at 23 percent. So, again, a big disparity there. Um, the last point probably being inflation. So if you look at inflation as well, um, it's 6.2 percent at the moment. But if you look at kind of wages, you might have had a pay increase this tax year or at the beginning of the year. That, that's kind of on average at three percent. So, again, a big disparity there against what we're spending, what we're getting and what we can actually afford. So then we'll move on to um, rates. So maybe looking at some uncertainty in the market. So we're going to have a quick look at um, mortgage rates, inflation rates and then the Bank of England base rate. And I guess firstly, to put kind of all of this into perspective, we're starting at a very low base. We, we've had the last few years of enjoying very low interest rate interest rates and inflation so when we say you know a 100 percent increase or it's doubled it is from a low base so that's to bear in mind so um typical two-year fixes um along the bottom here depending on your ltv so we've seen 75 percent ltvs and 60 percent ltvs go up by 20 27 percent and then on average if you look at all of it they've risen at kind of around 10 percent so you'll probably be feeling probably the pinch of that yourself um, and definitely for for a lot of your customers at the moment as well. Then we come on to inflation. Um, I don't think you can kind of leave your house, get in the car without experiencing um, having to fill up with a lot of petrol or heating your house or whatever that is. So lots and lots um, of price rises across the board. Um, uh, we, we would have picked out individual markets, but it's kind of across the board um, completely. 
Um, and then the Bank of England, obviously we saw the last rise to 0.75 in the last couple of weeks. Um, the market has predicted further rises, um, maybe up to 2%. Um, again, putting in perspective where we started, I actually had to look at what the average uh, base rate over the last um, 40, uh, 43 years was for, sorry, for um, inflation rates, and that was over 9%. So we do need to put all these rates in perspective and, and keep that in check. But again, your base from where you are to where you're going is, is going to be very different. And then lastly, um, I promise, so the last slide on the challenges is looking at credit in the UK. And I won't go through all of these figures, but it's kind of in two parts, really. First one is a customer's understanding and actually knowing what their um, credit score is. So um, we've, we've got here over 50% of customers who buy a property don't actually know what their credit score is. And 10% of customers have actually seen a change in their credit score because of the pandemic. So that's kind of one part of it. And then we're looking at, you know what debt there is in the UK. 3.2 million um, of customers have at least missed at least one payment. Then coming from mostly credit cards, utility, and some council tax bills there as well. Um, 4.2 million of adults having a CCJ, uh, the average um, amount being 3,000. So as much as we're, we're not an adverse credit lender, but we do have. Um, products specifically for customers who may be seeing the pandemic affect their income, et cetera. Um, so we do cater to them, but I just wanted to highlight kind of credit in the UK as well. So in um, summary, that's the doom and gloom bit over, I promise. But um, one thing I'll really say is whenever we see challenge in our market comes innovation afterwards. And that's very, very much what Kensington are about. Um, over the last year, we've launched um, seven new products plus plus kind of variations of those products as well. So there's definitely a lender appetite in the market for innovation. And this just gives us a platform with kind of these emerging markets of customers to do just that. Um, for yourselves, diverse, diversifying your business and future-proofing your business, there couldn't be a better time to do that at the moment. So I've said earlier, tech and aggregators can do your PTs and your remos, but they can't speak to a customer and go through this complexity, which is exactly where, where um, our brokers come in. Um, we've, we've said quite a few times about the importance of giving advice to these customers and it coming from a broker. And I actually heard someone say, and very recently, a very wise person, um, say about specialist customers being magnets and how you, you don't, it's not many industries in here that a customer comes and makes a very, very large purchase from someone and is very, very appreciative of that. I mean, you don't give your car salesman a bunch of flowers and a bottle of champagne for for buying a car from them, but you do to your specialist broker. And uh, I think because that customer has come from somewhere, the high street where they've been told no, potentially several times, and then someone finds a solution to what is such a big issue for them, they go and tell their friends and family. And that's where the magnet part comes in. You help one specialist customer, you'll be helping them potentially for life as well as their friends and family. So using this and kind of all the challenges in the market as a, as a positive and a way to, to really add value to your customers is um, absolutely key. And um, on that note, I will finish. Thank